LBR LBO Debrief Business Climate Outlook of 2016 Okay, welcome to Business Leader Roundtable. So we are going to discuss, we are going to ask these uh, senior executives what is keeping them awake in the night, literally. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, so what we have discussed so far, uh, last, you know, so many sessions, to get a feel for what is that political, economic, you know, landscape that we are going to uh, operate. Now we are going to listen to four senior corporate executives. What are the key challenges and how they intend to tackle those challenges? So this is a really, really tough, tough one, okay? So facing such tough questions publicly, I believe is a privilege for being, you know, hold, you know having, holding such, you know, high level position in the industry. Congratulations. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, please, uh, today's uh, session is going to be uh, chaired by one of our veteran session moderators, uh, Peter, uh, Peter. Peter is going to uh, chair the session. And would like to welcome uh, Stephen Enderby, Hamas PLC Group CEO, and Suresh Shah, um, Director of uh, 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 Leading Conglomerate, as well as Managing Director of Ceylon Brewery, no, sorry, Lion Brewery now, as, um, and Jean McAmey, uh CEO Sri Lanka of Standard Chartered, and then we have Tanya Polonovita Vetamuni, uh, who is heading uh, one of the multinational German based a large logistics company uh, uh, in Sri Lanka here. So we have a very interesting mix of uh, you know, experts and industry backgrounds uh, from uh, uh, service coming from FMCG, rather you know, consumer goods to uh, large <coughs> who, uh, conglomerate in, involved in a number of business activities. Hamas is a highly diversified company. And then we have a senior banker and somebody who is involved in logistic services uh, internationally. So please uh, uh, welcome our panel. LBR LBO Debrief, Business Climate Outlook of 2016. Um, so as Lakshman said, you have uh, heard a bunch of topics sure. like uh, state of the global economy, uh, shifting of geopolitical landscape, Outlook and assessment of Sri Lankan economy and the budget 2016, what does it mean to business and industry? So while the speakers in this panel might allude to some of these topics that you have heard about, uh, but definitely not a lot on the budget for sure, uh, but the whole idea of this session is, to, uh, is more about how four people who run businesses across different industries see as key challenges for themselves and their companies and industry as they approach another year of uh, uncertainty, a dynamic market, volatility, and more than anything else, extremely demanding customers who want new experiences all the time. Um, so in a sense, we kind of try and bring this all together in a very practical way, uh, and how some of these things affect business, for those who really run business. Uh, we'll focus on four areas, that's growth, um, talent, bottom line, and technology. So just to start things off, uh, we thought we'd have each of the speakers uh, give their thoughts on how they see very broadly how they see uh, the challenges as they approach 2016. Stephen, would you like to share some thoughts with us, please? Uh, first of all, I'd like to apologize for my voice. Uh, if during the course of the next uh, few minutes my voice gives up altogether, I will, uh, well, you'll get lucky and I'll leave you in the hands of my much more intelligent and interesting colleagues on the panel here. But anyway, I'll, I'll croak on for a bit and see how we go. Um, so when I think about our businesses, clearly uh, from the Hamas perspective, we are a business that is very significantly weighted towards the domestic economy here in Sri Lanka. Uh, more than 80% of our revenues and profitabilities are derived from within Sri Lanka. So the, the, the well-being of the Sri Lankan consumer is of, of real importance to us. Uh, and clearly that's why we, you know, we focus very strongly on what's come out of the budget and what it means for individuals. Uh, as we think forward into 2016-17, I must say I'm, 
I'm actually a little bit cautious at the moment. I, I, we've enjoyed a good year this year. We had a, a very uh, populist budget during the earlier parts of the year. That's driven our revenues quite nicely. Uh, we've seen consumer spending tick up. And that's why as we, we look at, uh, say, 16, 17, there is, there is some level of concern about just where we're going to, to find the same level of growth that we've enjoyed over these last couple of years. Uh, and I think uh, some of the areas that we're going to come on and discuss during the course of this afternoon are, are very germane to that. Um, you know, where will we find growth, the importance of people, and the criticality of us building really world-class teams, I think, is a, an important theme for us. Uh, one of the other areas that I think is increasingly important for us is starting to think about markets outside Sri Lanka. As I say, you know, his, uh, uh, we are today very heavily Sri Lanka weighted and I think there's a, a very interesting opportunity for many Sri Lankan businesses to be start moving away from thinking about traditional export markets in the West and thinking about the growing and developing opportunity that sits uh, regionally for us within South Asia and perhaps other markets in the broader region. So I think that, that market opportunity and how that can really drive growth for us is as an important component as well. So I think it, for me, uh, big issues are around achieving growth in a in a more challenged domestic environment, uh, starting to look outside for new opportunities in other markets and continuing to work hard in terms of developing really world-class teams. So the, those are the things that are very much top of my mind as I, I look at the, uh, the next year, Peter. Thank you, Stephen. Um, Suresh, would you uh, tell us what your take is on this subject? On, you know. Yeah, uh, thank you, Peter. Thank you, Lakshman, also for the invitation. Privilege to be here. In, uh, in terms of 2016, uh, conquer with uh, Stephen's view that uh, conditions are a little bit unsettled, so not really sure how 2016 is going to pan out. Um, but having said that, it's just another year. Uh, so we've got to take a view beyond uh, a single year and uh, look towards the future in that sense. And the, the real opportunity and also the real challenge that I see from a Sri Lankan perspective, plus also I think an Asian perspective, is that the consumer is getting ever more discerning as we move forward. And this is thanks to technology, thanks to the information available out there. The opportunity here is that companies can structure themselves to meet these emerging needs uh, with very broad range of things that consumers demand. Uh, the challenge is how, how you structure your company, really, uh, to meet those needs. So uh, opportunity as well as a challenge fundamentally being driven by the same thing, which is that consumers are getting ever more discerning. Um, if you look at the Sri Lankan context particularly, uh, the real challenge that I see for businesses, and this is not just for 2016 but going forward again, is that doing business in Sri Lanka is not easy. A uh, very simple example, a company wants a, uh, a building permit, you need to wait a year at least, uh, sometimes more, to get your building permit. So, uh, on the one hand, you have a consumer who is very discerning, who wants things quickly, wants things yesterday really, and on the other hand, you have a regulatory environment which really tends to hold you back. So, m marrying these two, um, on the one hand, a consumer who demands things very soon, and on the other hand, a regulatory environment that tends to hold you back. I think this, for a Sri Lankan enterprise, remains the real key challenge as we move forward. Peter? Thank you, Suresh. Jim, your take on uh, challenges for 2016. Uh, Standard Chartered Bank is, has been a proud member of this society since, um, I think it's 1864. Um, our, our business model is to continue investing and helping to develop this country's economy further. That would include engagement of, in investment flows and trade flows between Sri Lanka and the 70 other countries that we have presence in, helping, the, helping both investors come and, and uh, build their businesses here and add value for everyone, as well as Sri Lankan enterprises to expand their uh, reach outside the country. It's also, we work closely with the financial services industry in helping the local banks um, with best practices and, and different ways of improving themselves. And also we clear for most of the banks in this country their payment systems in, in countries like you know, New York City and, and London and up and coming now, uh, the, the Chinese Yuan, 
which is becoming now a reserve currency. So whether it's the financial services industry, the local uh, domestic economy, or the patterns of trade and investment, uh, we're very keen uh, to continue to help it, that expand. And in 2016, we are um, very supportive and, and, in, and uh, desirous of seeing the kinds of change that's going to be required to make that happen. Because I think status quo should definitely not be the game plan for this coming year, but instead it should be embracing the underlying changes that are uh, well, well, well announced, well identified, uh, embracing both the challenging and, and opportunistic aspects of each. And it's that pace of change and that embrace of change that I think will determine what kind of a year it's going to be and just how much opportunity and requirement and capital will be available to help fund, finance, and further the change and development of, of this great country. Thank you, Jim. Tanya, uh, some focus on the, the very competitive and global business like logistics, and you must be having some special challenges. See, uh, I represent a, one of the largest uh, German logistic company. There are 10 largest in the world. Uh, I'm also the current uh, chairperson of Sri Lanka Logistic and Freight Forwarders Association, which is the apex body of the industry. Um, my take on this more from, more from the industry perspective, I think um, the logistic business that I'm in today, the speed and the flexibility is the key to success. The um, investment in technology and HR and have a leaner organization structure is required in compared to the size of the market. Today we are talking about less than a million containers moving out of Sri Lanka. Uh, the market size itself will determine the, the success of the investment coming into the country. If we don't have a, a policy, a reformance or to the existing policies, I think in time to come bringing the investment which is required at this moment of time, it's going to be a biggest challenge. Uh, because if we don't expand, if we don't have a, a larger players coming into Sri Lanka, the industry will never grow. And we will, larger players like ourselves, tomorrow DHL or, or expeditors, uh, rather than using Sri Lanka, the hub status or the Silk Route concept, we will be getting into a price war. So I think our challenges will be more to have a very flexible, very reformed, uh, very uh, concrete solutions in the industry to bring the investment into the country. Okay, thank you very much. Stephen, uh, on this question of growth, because um, Hamers was a family-owned company run like a family-owned business and, you know, it grew at a certain pace. And clearly we are seeing from the numbers that uh, since there's been this change to bring professional management, uh, we have seen very significant growth, particularly over the last two years since you took uh, charge of the business in its new format, so to speak. What has it been that you have brought, or what are the ingredients that have driven this growth? Because you're serving largely the same market. You've made some foray into Bangladesh. Uh, but where is this growth across fairly traditional businesses, established businesses? Where is it coming from? What's the ingredient? And how much of that will be challenged in the, next, in the coming year? Well, first of all, it wouldn't be right of me at all to try and claim very much credit for what's happened no. to Amos. I've got a great team of people. Sure. And also, I mean, I was very fortunate to take over the leadership of the business at, at a time when it was in great shape. Um, one of the things that I've, one of the reasons for taking on the job was I thought, here's a great business in great sectors. Um, you know, and I think when I, you know, based on my experience in emerging markets globally, that's basically been all my career to this point in time. You're looking for businesses that have great positions, strong leadership positions in and around personal care, health care. You know you're on a winner. So I, I just got lucky is the way I look at that. Um, but I guess for, for me, when I think about you know, the future and what we want to do and what we need to do at Hamas, it's undoubtedly to grow. It's to grow at a rate that's larger, higher than the market. And I say our teams have done that over the last while. And I think when I... When I try and sort of rationalize that, I guess I think a lot of it is about, it's about having a vision, a sense of aspiration, setting clear, stretched targets for what we can achieve, and then letting the team loose to chase them. Um, I, I think that, 
uh, you know, one of the changes that one can have in terms of a management style is actually giving it that bit more freedom to teams to, to pursue dreams, to pursue ambition, to pursue where you really want to do uh, and where you really want to achieve. So that's an important component to it is actually the people part of it, envisioning and letting people chase hard after stretch targets. Alongside that, I think the other part of my job sits in and around taking strategic decisions. Where, where we should be growing, what we should be growing in. Um, you talked a little bit about, say, our Bangladesh experience, and I think for us that has been an important part of the equation, not only for sort of financial outcomes, but actually for, for proving to ourselves that we could actually really succeed in export markets. Uh, and as I, as I said before, I, I think that you know, when you look at uh, markets like Bangladesh uh, and you think about many of the, the products and the services that we enjoy here in Sri Lanka, we actually have a, a capability that's beyond that marketplace. So we go there with a set of products and services that people go, hey, that's actually that's quite good quality, that. I'll, I'll have some of that. Um, and so I think it's that you know, identification of markets where there is real opportunity to grow at a rate that's disproportionate to what we can experience in the Sri Lankan market. So if I was to compare and contrast, I'll, I'll talk about personal care because I know a little bit about that. Um, you know, personal care markets in Sri Lanka, we've got 20 million people and we've got quite high rates of penetration. Uh, Bangladesh, there's 160 million people, so you're already 8x to begin with. And you're then in a place where personal care product penetration is much, much lower. So you've probably got a market that's actually 20 times the size in terms of opportunity than what we have uh, here in the domestic market. And we've got great products. So I'm going, well, you know, why aren't we doing more of this? Why aren't we, it's, it's my job just to ask the questions and then let my great teams with our great products run after the opportunity. Uh, and I think that, I believe that many Sri Lankan businesses should be emboldened to really look at regional opportunities. That's not just to dash off in a plane and go somewhere, but that's to, to think hard about the competencies that we possess, the, the products and the services that we possess, and think about which markets do these really translate into opportunities. So I'm not sure if I've answered your question you very have, well. But, you have. Uh, In fact, uh, the interesting point that you're making is that uh, there is a market, and uh, it's not so much that you are going after a new market. It's very interesting that you say just by reorientating your team uh, and giving them a different sense of purpose, there is an untapped reach that you can go after. And we'll come to that when we talk about talent. But also you are talking about necessarily going after the big markets. The products are great. You should not only be in Sri Lanka. Which brings uh, me to you, uh, Suresh. Your business, uh, I don't know how much of your business is in Sri Lanka and how much of it is abroad. But I have not seen a lot of Sri Lankan beers when I travel abroad. And this business is becoming, it's, a, it's consolidating. Uh, you know, at a global level, the beer industry, massive consolidation, and Oiser Bush and all of that, in Beb and all that. How do you see this business of yours growing uh, significantly? Very simple, Peter. Sri Lanka per capita consumption of beer in the country is just six liters per annum per person. Okay, which is six liters is I think something like half a bottle a month or something like this. Okay. Uh, if you compare this with the rest of the world, so let me give you some stats. If you take average Asia is in the 20s, China probably in the 30s now, um, countries in, the, uh, in Europe in the close to the hundreds, there are some countries that go beyond 100, uh, US is something like 80. So there is tremendous growth potential in Sri Lanka itself. Consumption potential. Yeah, yes. growth potential okay. for the yes. industry, and which is why you don't see us going charging across to other markets. Right. Because we see the opportunity in Sri Lanka, uh, the investment is in Sri Lanka as a result of that, yeah. and uh, so we see this tremendous growth opportunity. Okay. Uh, in terms of, uh, as a group, if you take the Carson Cumberbatch group, though, the story is a little bit different because if you take our plantation business, yes. it's entirely overseas, nothing in Sri Lanka. So if you take it at a group perspective, we are exposed not just to Sri Lanka, but also within the region, so Indonesia, Malaysia, India, uh, the beer business, Sri Lanka. Uh, we do have a very small market uh, close to Sri Lanka, which is the Maldives, uh, where the beer business is the market leader. So to that extent, yes, you know, we've, we've gone out, we've got uh, uh, products out there in different parts of the world. 
uh, the, the Sri Lankan beers. Uh, make sure that next time you fly, we'll make sure that you get something. Yep. Uh, but fundamentally, the focus has been Sri Lanka and will remain Sri Lanka for the reason that I said, because the growth opportunity and the potential in the country is, is enormous. We just need to get the, uh, the, the policy right. Okay, that's so it. we'll come back to policy, and that's an, that's an important point. So you're saying policy could be something that would inhibit growth, uh, as far as you're concerned, possibly. As, as of now, it's the only thing that is. the only thing, okay, so we'll, we'll... LBR LBO Debrief, Business Climate Outlook of 2016.